Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, wherever you are in the world. My name is John, and I want to welcome you to another Marketing Experiments web click, and we're live. And uh, today, we're going to talk about lead generation, specifically three simple tactics one company used to generate a 96% increase in leads. And uh, you're really going to enjoy this case study. Uh, we've, uh, it's actually just recently come through the lab. And um, in addition to that, we're also going to spend some time looking at your web pages, providing you uh, instantaneous feedback, uh, hoping to serve you and to allow you to reach more of your customers. Just a little bit about myself, if you're not familiar with me, it's, it's actually been a little bit since I've been on one of these clinics. I'm a senior manager of research and strategy. I've been here for seven plus years, and uh, currently I'm uh, conducting many meta-analyses of the database, and it's uh, quite fun to say the least. Uh, before we begin, quick note, if you're on Twitter, we'd like to hear your questions and comments. We've got an entire team standing by. Also, GoToWebinar has a Q&A functionality. I'm watching that. Um, we've got a team watching that, and uh, we're ready to get your questions and to get your feedback and interaction. So uh, let's get started. Uh, the first things first, I'd like to bring up a colleague of mine, and this is Selena Blue. Selena, it's good to have you here today. Thanks, John. Excellent. So um, one thing, Selena, is uh, if you guys don't know much about Selena, Selena has actually been here for three years. And she has uh, basically sees about every case study in the library. So um, one of her expertise is she's able to take a look at a case study and extrapolate all the different learnings and actually write about it so that we can understand it. So um, we're really glad to have Selena here. She's going to be helping us at the end with LiveOp as well. Um, but first, Selena, I'd like you to introduce the case study for today. So if you uh, don't mind, get us started. All right. So today, we're going to be looking at Test Protocol 1877 in the Mech Labs Research Library. And we're going to be looking at a B2B company that's selling thermal image cameras. So the goal of this test was to generate more leads. And so our research question for the day is, which landing page will generate the most leads? And they did this using an AB variable cluster split test. So let's go ahead and look at the control. So it's kind of your typical lead gen page here. They're using a guide, a PDF here to incentivize people to fill out the form. And they've got a few things going for them correctly here. They've got, you can see a, an image of the guide. So it's become a more real, tangible incentive here. And then they've got bullets with the information. So it's a little bit easier to scan through. And then also their call to action. They've got some value added in there with get your free guide. So to take a look at that. And then now we'll go ahead and look at the treatment. And so you can see those, those three um, things that are doing well in the control they've brought through. Um, but the research analysts, they've made a few more changes here. So you can see the headline's different. We've got a different image. Again, you've, you've still got the camera in play and being used, but we've got a different angle of it now. And we've got a few less uh, form fields in our form there and added a, you know, a line above it as well. So let's go ahead and look at the two so we can really see those differences in play. So uh, audience, this, we're kind of at a standstill now. Uh, Selena's done a really good job describing the two treatments. The question I want to know is this. Were the differences in the treatment enough to make a difference? Because on the surface, I mean, they look pretty similar. You know, if you're not literally looking deep into the details. So audience, let's, take a, let's hear from you. We're watching the Q&A. We're watching Twitter. Which one do you think is going to win? Do you think the control um, has enough going for it, or is the treatment uh, has a significant difference? Everybody's a treatment, 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 treatment. OK. <laughs> Overwhelming. Clearly, the audience does not like the control. <laughs> it had those you, three things. Come how on. How do you know the control isn't the 96%? I voted for the control. <laughs> OK, Paul just voted for the control. Thank you. Well, um, there's no surprise, Selena. Let's see the results. As the audience clearly got it, 96% increase with the treatment. So this is interesting, right? Let's take a closer look. Uh, Selena was very right in the things that she pointed out. There are things that the control is doing right. And when I take a closer look at the comparison, the differences are almost kind of subtle in a sense. Um, I remember working with one analyst uh, prior to this clinic, and we were taking a look at the page, and, 
and he wasn't sure where to start because they were so similar. It's almost like he needed a magnifying glass to kind of figure out what the difference was. But today what we want to do is we want to actually spend some time going over three tactics, or I would call them three differences, three subtle differences that you can take with you and apply to your pages and hopefully replicate the same results. So Selena, thank you so much. Thanks. And uh, we're going to bring Selena back up at the end of the clinic so we can get her feedback on your web pages. So with that, let's get started. Let's go over a couple observations and we're going to give you three observations, three, right? And the first one is about the imagery. So uh, let me ask you audience, what is it about the imagery that you find different? Let me go ahead and pull you aside. Here's the control. Now, these are some of the things that we've noticed. Is there anything else that you would want to point out about this image in the control? Right now, I just see a technician and he's working. Is there anything else about this image um, that we should note? Anything. Again, be the detective, okay, product. Feels busy, okay, the control focuses on the man, right? Excellent. Actual readable screen, much better view of the, okay, let's focus on the product. Strange facial hair, excellent comment, um, George. I really appreciate that. Uh, you guys are starting, you're seeing, right? That's exactly what I see. Uh, not the facial hair, but the focus is on the man. I don't know if he's wearing a mask or, or what, but take a look in comparison to the treatment. Do you guys see the difference? Take a look at the treatment. We've got, we can actually see the product now, right? And you guys uh, have noticed correctly, right? Th there's a subtle difference here. I can see the product. I can actually see the thermal imaging at work. But I want to ask you a question. Why in the world does that matter? Why would that make a difference if it made a difference? Let me ask you. I'm watching your comments. I'm actually looking at the screen to the side here, looking at your comments. Okay. So, uh, Brandon says clarity. Okay. Laura says you're selling the product. Okay. Uh, Steven says uh, you've got the user imaging. Uh, imagine herself using it. Okay. The user is imagining it. Okay. Sharon says it looks like it's solving a problem. Okay, excellent. And then Carl says the text does not interfere. Very good observations, team. Very good observations. So let me, uh, I think you guys are very close too, and let me kind of tell you uh, some of what we see here. The question that it comes down to in my mind, and for many of us, is why is this image even important? What, what is it that makes imagery so powerful anyway? Uh, some people have claimed that people can process images 60,000 times faster than text, right? And if that's the case, let's figure out where is the image in the page. The image is one of the first things that you see. What are the first questions that people ask when they come to your website? Where am I at and what can I do here? So if you think about the image, it has a job and that image's job is to help somebody feel like they're in the right place. Where in this instance, they're actually trying to find a tool, a better tool, because I'm sure they're not trying to figure it out without a tool already. They're probably trying to find a better tool to do a better job. And when I look at the treatment image, the treatment image actually does a better job of showing that tool in action, or at least showing more of the capabilities of that tool. And, and that's the thing, and that's kind of the key, key illustrator here, is that this image captures an element of the prospect's story or evokes more potential emotion or connection to the prospect's story than the control. This is why it could be a significant contributor to the overall conversion success. A follow-up test would confirm that or not. But think about it. People come with something in mind. They're trying to accomplish something. They're trying to do something. Therefore, you want to hit them immediately with content, with imagery that suggests that they are indeed in the right place because they're not reading, they're evaluating in, with emotional shortcuts. There's one more thing that the imagery does that's not necessarily apparent. Um, is anybody here familiar with Dr. Norman and his emotional design, his theories of emotional design? Anybody in the audience? Doesn't look like anybody's familiar here with that. Um, Interesting, fascinating research um, uh, that he's conducted, but ultimately he's uh, spent many years, I think 20 years or so, uh, working in this field of emotional design. And one of the, the hypotheses and kind of claims that he makes is that a product will be more appealing 
when its display or its advertisement or the way in which it's uh, is perceived is closely aligned with the best emotional benefit that it can offer. And in this case, it would be behavioral, right? People would use this more as a behavioral thing. It helps me do my job better. But what if you were to just show that, that device in pre-packaging? That would be more visceral, but in this case, people don't get the appeal, visceral or reflective, which is, I look cool because I have this, um, this imagery tool. No, this image actually more closely aligns their perception of where they're at and the product itself to the behavioral kind of aspect of the product. So even if you take some other uh, kind of scientist theories on design and whatnot, you'll see that the image actually plays a bigger, better role in that than the control. Do we know that 100% for sure? No, we need to test it. So with that, let's go to a second observation. The treatment also shifts the focus from what the company offers to how the customer experience will be improved. Let's take a closer look. So the text in the control is focused primarily on the company, right? I mean, take a look. Seven reasons to choose A, we've blurred out the brand. So let's just call them to choose John's Thermal Imagery, uh, you know, products, right? See why John's Thermal Imagers are the tools of choice of the industry, commercial and building professionals. Learn why, et cetera. So it immediately begins to, I guess, sell me um, and, and convince me as to why I should uh, choose one of their imaging products. But take a look at the treatment. The treatment shifts and it focuses more or less on the interests of the customer, which is ultimately, I need a new and better tool, but I don't know which one to get. So it wants to help them in that process now, granted, it's going to lean you towards this particular brand, but in the end, it feels like you're actually being served at least more or less than that compared to the other. And why does this matter? Well, let me ask you a question. Um, does anybody like to uh, date uh, looking at uh, personals or try to find a date looking at personals or even online dating profiles? Anybody like searching through online dating profiles? Is it fun? Is it great? Um, if you think about the control page, let's go back. It kind of reminds me of one, right? You know, seven reasons why you should go out with me. Um, I'm handsome, funny, sophisticated, rich, fabulous. Oh, and I do research. Uh, God, no. I mean, that's kind of the immediate, uh, I don't know. When I look at the control, I think of dating profile. I think of an online profile. I think of, uh, thank you, Cameron. Cameron works for eHarmony, yes. And so, this is precisely what they're trying to get away from. They're trying to match you in compatibility, right? But you see, it, it's kind of, you're talking about yourself and how often is it really true? Um, I read a study, I think it was OK Cupid posted this, that people say they're two inches taller than they actually are. Really interesting, right? Um, so uh, you take a look at this, it's not personal ad, like a, yeah, like a personal ad, it's more like a personal conversation. Uh, I wouldn't say it's really personal conversation, but I would say it's more in the direction. It's actually trying to, well, connect on something of mutual interest. We want to provide you the right imager, imagery tool, and you're looking for the right imagery tool. So we're going to focus on that instead of trying to say, here's seven good reasons why I'm better than you. Uh, again, it, it's the feeling that it leaves with it, and which leads me ultimately to this point. Company logic creates that ugly feeling, right? Uh, where you're totally focused on yourself and you're totally forcing your perspective of yourself on others. Stay away from it. Customer logic, or at least just that frame of thought, helps you to break out of that sense of self that you have and into the reality of what you have and, and how it can truly help somebody. You're not going to last in a conversation if you can't convince them right away through natural back and forth discussion that you can add value to their life, right? And you don't do that by telling them, well, you need to be my friend. You should be my friend for seven good reasons. No, you focus on the subject, and then as you see their interest build and build, you say, you know, actually, I, I know something. I don't know if it'll help you, but there's something that you see, it's different. It has a different feeling. That's probably a big contributor in this case. That's what we're observing. Now let's go to a final and third observation. 
Before I continue further, audience, am I moving too fast? Is this a good pace? Let me hear from the audience. I'm waiting. Yes, good, okay. Good pace, okay. Then I won't stop. Excellent. Oh, faster. Okay, okay, well, let's go. Treatment reduces. Okay, sorry. The key observation here, let's go to number three. The treatment reduces as much of the mental cost associated with downloading the content as possible. Uh, what do we mean by this? Let's take a closer look at the imagery. First, let me ask you a question. How much does this piece of content cost? If you were interested in a thermal imager and you wanted to look deep into the heart of machines, um, how much would this cost for you? What, what would set some red flags off in your mind? Audience, give it a shot. I'm watching. I'm reading. Opportunity cost. Why do you need my phone number? Excellent. Too many fields. Oh, I got to fill out all those fields. Privacy policy. Really? You're going to be uh, too many custom fields? Too many fields. Okay, not only the fields reduced, but the physical proportion of the page. Yep, the proportion of the page, yeah, it just feels like it's more, right? Fields are too wide, too much friction, TMI, too much information. Excellent, those are very good observations. Very good observations. I'm looking, catalog is sideways, okay? Overall, too confusing. Excellent, right? So there's a lot of mental cost associated with this. And then some, well, they might spam me uh, kind of cost, right? Let's go over them. First, effort. You guys hit it on the nail. There's a lot of work to do here. And I don't know about you, but I don't wake up every morning looking forward to filling out these fantastic forms. Um, I avoid them, right? Um, we all do instinctively. So just the fact that it looks big and there's a lot to do really does something. In fact, I was in the break room today and somebody went to the coffee pot and they didn't, they didn't see any coffee in the pot. And you know what they said? Uh, they were like, oh, I guess I'll have to get coffee later. And I was like, yeah, too much friction, <laughs> right? They, they just didn't want to make another pot, right? It's okay, I do the same thing. I laugh because I do it all the time. But I mean, if it's with a coffee pot in the break room and the coffee's free, then how much more with a form when you're getting a white paper that's not actually a paper, but it's a digital down, you see what I'm saying? Like, keep these things in mind. The next thing, anxiety. Um, there are some anxiety. Uh, you, somebody mentioned phone number. And there's one little thing at the very top that you should notice. All fields required for, here we go, best localized customer service. So in addition to giving you this, these seven wonderful reasons, we're going to give you a wonderful phone call. Um, now we know that that may be the case uh, in the other, in the treatment, but it's not, the attention is not drawn to that as powerfully. So let's take a look. Let's look. See on the treatment at the top, it doesn't say we're going to give you localized customer service, we're acquiring you. It's reinforcing the fact <clears throat> that we're going to give you something and you're going to at least get some answers by providing us information. We also reworded the messaging around the privacy policy, right, to your personal information is protected. I think Michael Agard has done some interesting tests on privacy policies and the way that um, they study, very fascinating stuff, um, but it does matter. It does make a difference. What's the point of all of this? Free content is not without cost. For example, have you ever been in a situation where somebody was offering you a gift and you're like, I don't want to accept it, right? Why? Um, I knew this couple that they would, they would habitually try and invite my wife and, out, uh, my wife and I out to dinner so they could watch us, so they could tell us to watch their cats for a week. And it's just like, just ask me. But what they're trying to do is they're trying a little persuasion tactic called reciprocity, right? In which when I give you something, you feel compelled to give me something back, right? That whole kind of dimension of human behavior is really what's kind of going on here. And so we instinctively know that getting something is never free, right? There's usually is some kind of emotional cost associated with it. In this case, we want to help kind of get rid of the illusion that there is more. There really isn't that much emotional cost involved. And by adjusting the form, by adjusting the way it looks and the way it feels, we can help bring them back to reality a little bit, right? Um, as opposed to scaring them into believing that they're going to get a bigger, better call. Now, in some cases, if you're trying to get a higher qualified lead, you absolutely want to make them feel like there's going to be a larger conversation. That could actually get you more leads in some industries. But in this case, no. Stay away. Reduce the perceived costs. 
because again, when people see something that they're going to get, they instinctively think, what do I have to give? So let's think about, let's go into review here. A couple of key things that you can keep in mind, tactics that you can take home. Look at your images. If images are truly that powerful for the human brain, they're processed much quickly, or more, yeah, just quickly, quickly, my language is all messed up now, right? If the images are better than the rest of the content, then make sure that they in some way connect to the story. Make sure that they illustrate the kind of things that will increase your odds of capturing their attention and converting it to interest. Help it to support that. Make sure it connects to the story. Secondly, ask yourself, do your images illustrate the problem or the solution? So it's not just about connecting to where they are in the story, but actually doing a good job of it. So in the case of Dr. Um, Donald Norman and his theory of emotional design, it would, okay, are they buying something because it looks cool? because it is really useful and works like very efficiently or is because it makes them feel better about themselves or look better amongst the social crowd. Whatever it is that you're trying to capitalize on, make sure your image is content, its substance captures that in addition to where they're at in the whole process, whether they're at the beginning, at the end, and whatnot. The next thing, ask yourself, is your copy customer centric or is it like a personal ad? Is it sophisticated, funny? right, pleasurable, or is it I'm trying to just uh, a person to a person trying to help each other out really want us both to walk away happier. Next, um, does it connect to the actual resulting customer experience? Two final bits. Do you have any unnecessary form fields? Does your cost look worse than it actually is? Are you, make, are you giving them a scary monster when it's really just a cat, okay? Help them to see the truth. The truth is it's not as bad as it seems. And the way in which you do that is by reducing those unnecessary things like form width, okay? And the form fields that you don't actually need to have a productive conversation. Finally, is, are there any people that are nervous? Like a little bit more nervous than the, the average kind of customer coming to your site. Have you dealt with their anxiety about privacy, especially with lead generation? They know they're getting a call but are you gonna sell their list? Those are the key things to keep in mind. And finally, the big question is this, which one of these do you think is, has a higher priority than others? Actually, I'm gonna ask you, which one of these three tactics that we went over do you think made a bigger difference? Let me ask. Audience, I'm watching. The last one, okay, the anxiety and the friction, fields. I got a lot of people saying fields. Okay, number three. I have some people number two, thank you. Okay, cost, copy, uh, copy <laughs> customer centric. Okay, the resulting customer experience. Okay, customer centric. Uh, looks like an even balance between two and three. Um, I definitely feeling in this case, I'm both on the side of two and three, but we won't truly know until we run a follow up test. So those are your follow up tests, two or three. Um, and that's where you, and what's interesting is one focuses on the cost force and the other on value force. So you could actually learn a lot just by following up in an instance like this. All right, so I'm taking a look at the time. We've got a lot of time left for live optimization. We've got 10 minutes. Before we get started, I want to tell you about something cool that I, uh, I actually just found out about. I know that the, um, and actually, no, not this one. I've known about the certification courses. This is something else. Um, you guys can get a discount on our certification courses. These, uh, they've actually done a really good job in updating these. Um, a lot of the case studies have been updated. So if you've been through this before and you'd like to see some updated case studies, um, some content, I'd highly encourage you to consider it. Uh, one of the great things about these particular courses, the online testing one in particular, is that it's not vendor specific. So regardless of the vendors that you guys have or the situations you're in, you'll find it applicable to what you're doing. Uh, there was another thing that I thought we were gonna highlight um, but I think we're saving that for later. It's an e-commerce kind of a, a rating tool. Really cool. But um, with that, let's go to live optimization. I want to bring Selena back up here. Selena, welcome back. Thanks. Let's uh, have some fun. So uh, let's take a look at our first page. Here, if you take a look on the screen, kidslovemartialarts.com. This is Scotts Valley Martial Arts. It looks like their primary audience is uh, their, their 
parents, and it looks like they've got another one, martial arts enthusiasts. The page purpose homepage, I'm not sure I understand that. I'm guessing that you want people to fill out the form. If you take a look on the left, you see that really long kind of page? We're just at the top. So this is one of your traditional, extremely long sales form pages. Um, you will see them frequently around the internet. Uh, so let me ask you, team on the other side of the line, audience, how would you help these guys? How would you help uh, Scott, in this case, or Scott's Valley, or the, the team here, how would you help them do a better job? Um, did everybody get the link? Uh, we're scrolling up the page, okay? Let's, uh, too, much, uh, too much going on, okay, says Carolyn. More white space, decrease the content by a lot, says Rachel. Too much color, Melissa, Simpli simplify, says Carrie, okay? Too many fonts, more readable fonts, so we're getting a little common denominator here, graphics. Have kids actually doing martial arts, that's awesome. I, that's a great one, actually. Uh, there we go, giving them too much to focus on. Yeah, excellent. Selena, I want to let you take a crack at it. Selena, what are some of the top things that you notice with this page in particular? My top thing is when looking at that form field at the top, when you're reading the, the top copy when you're first seeing it, start right. here, get our class schedule, prices, and web specials. When, right. for me, kind of an expectation, this type of uh, area, I would expect those things to just be on the site. Right. So yeah. for me, I would be feeling a lot of friction over handing over my information that I kind of expect just to get um, just from the site viewing it. Um, so I would probably just leave before filling it out and miss right. the, the important part that they're offering below the field. They're really telling you and our free report on how to build confidence and bullyproof your child. So I feel like that's their bigger nugget there, and right. you're missing it until after the field. And so I think they're going to be losing some some form field uh, form completions there by not bringing that up above the fields. It's actually really good, um, and I'll tell you why. I actually ran a martial arts school for six years, and I taught kids that were ha I taught people that were half my age to like double my age, all in the same class, and. And it's interesting, you're absolutely right. People expect that kind of information in that industry on the site. Like, why wouldn't you put your schedule on the site? When do I know when to come in to even watch you, right? Or pricing, the industry, I mean, people put the prices on their windows when you drive around, so you're absolutely right. But the one thing that they can't offer you, the one thing I didn't necessarily have up my sleeve mm -hmm. was the bully proof, right? And if you're trying just to start a conversation, that's a really kind of smart observation about that, and um, and it's and it's just a really interesting thing that um, in trying to start it using information now in different industries. Yes, um, I mean, if you're like a PR newswire, or somebody that has co you know different custom pricing, you're going to need to invite somebody to a conversation. But for this, no, right? At least not in my experience. Uh, uh, very good. Um, some other things, that, that at least that I noticed. Uh, first of all, you've got a very long sales page. Are you on the line, actually? Um, if you're on the line, Alexis, I think. I'm not sure if you're on the line, Alexis. If you are, the first question that I would ask you is, where are these people coming from when they arrived at this page? Is this kind of an SEO landing page? Is this a PPC landing page? How much do they already know, right? And uh, how much do you already know about the person? And I'll tell you why. As a martial arts instructor and manager of a school for many years, I had parents come in with a lot of, they had a focus on one particular thing. Maybe their child is struggling with attention deficit. Maybe, um, maybe they actually are, um, they feel like they need a little bit more confidence. Um, they never mentioned bullying, but um, it's usually one thing. And here in this page, you're trying to cover everything. What would be the effect? of actually having the page focus on just one thing and actually targeting those keywords. So targeting keywords such as attention deficit, targeting keywords such as bullying, and actually reducing the length of the page and increasing the specificity of the content to focus on just that. That way they don't have to all in that incessant scrolling. I like the testimonials. I, I like some of the potential power of this page, but I it's, it's so all over the place, unfortunately, you may lose them. And I love the comment, show them doing martial arts. I've never had a student ever in my class hug a heart with a red shirt on. They were always kicking something or hitting something or screaming. So show them doing those things because that's what they want to see their child doing.
not hugging a heart or putting their thumbs up like this. So um, just, just my two cents, um, really. I, uh, anything else, Selena? Should we move on to the next? I think let's move on to the next one. Excellent. All right. Here we've got, it's kind of a, we've got a merit, uh, merit trust law group. We've cut off the header there, but it, I think that was only just a logo and a phone number. And it looks like uh, their audience are people in need of family legal counsel. And they're trying to increase the amount of leads from this capture form. So uh, audience, again, one more time, let me hear your thoughts. Let me see what you've got. And while I'm waiting on you to give me feedback, I'm gonna hear it from Selena. Selena, top couple of things. What are some of the observations that you can make in possible recommendations? Uh, my first thing would be the call to action says get my free assessment now. Um, so read, being able to see what those fields are, my first concern coming to this page would be, well, what am I going to be able to get now just based off of these four fields? Like, is this right. going to be a custom evaluation? Because that's what I would expect. Right. But with just those things, I'm either not going to get it now, I'm going to get it much later, or I'm going to get something that's not really customized for me like I would really like with an evaluation. Right. It's interesting about that. Um, I really feel like this rings true because I always, whenever I'd see the lawyer commercials, my wife would be like, you know, they're really just a referral service. Right, you know, I'm like, oh, well, I didn't, you know. But she would go out of the way to point that out because that, that means that they're not real for some, in some kind of percep perception, you know, in reality or whatnot. And that's kind of what I feel like you're touching on is this idea of it doesn't seem real. I mean, you're mm -hmm. only collecting this much and you're gonna give me a free assessment. Um, are you, or are you just gonna sell my information to somebody, the highest bidder? And then what I thought I was getting from Ameritrust is actually from uh, Paul Cheney, Cairo, uh, you know, family practice. Uh, so, excellent. Um, audience, uh, I'm, I'm reading. $200 an hour. $200 an hour, everybody. Just uh, Paul dot, okay, I'll stop mm. there. Uh, the attorney photo doesn't have a head, uh, says Tina. So, uh, a couple things from the audience. I don't want to tell a stranger about my case before I get to know them. Excellent. <laughs> Very good. Need family law help? Um, need to put that uh, customer's problem area's language, okay? I probably wouldn't tell you about my case in the form, says Caroline, neither would I, I'm with you. Um, excellent, so you guys are seeing the same exact things. And what's interesting is when you scroll down the page, a lot of the type of things that might um, even, you know, convince you to even try and think about filling out that form are way out of the primary eye path, right? Um, not the disclaimer, of course, but there we go, team, good. Benefits of experience, family law attorney, all the different things that they can do. But when you scroll up, all you see are kind of sad faces and, um, you know, or people playing, or actually people hugging. But normally, we fight for your family. So a lot of this doesn't make sense. In this case, you need a new headline, right? Your image needs to be a little bit better connected to the story. It's just not immediately connecting. It's kind of wasted space at this point. Um, so you've really got some issues there, but let's take a look at one more page since we've got one more minute. Here we go, women-centric. Primary audience is women, so Selena in this case, and uh, we've got uh, a team like there, Tara actually, we asked about this. Purpose, the page purpose is a blog, so I'm assuming you want them to click, you want them to read, you want them to engage, and you want to increase site traffic, average articles per visitor, things like that, I'm, I'm guessing. So uh, let's take a look at it. Uh, Selena, real quick, top couple things that you've noticed about this page, things that they could improve or opportunities. Uh, one, it doesn't really look like I can, I can navigate too well between all the posts. It's kind of one big, long, very variety of posts. So, I mean, I can kind of see the tags, but some of them have so many tags, I'm a little overwhelmed. Right. Um, so being able to kind of click through categories would be one thing that would be nice. And then um, the images. The images don't necessarily, we talked about the importance of images. Right. And they don't really match up with the headlines of what I would expect to be reading. Yeah, totally, like grow your profits through smart product placement. And look, there's a man with a tie, <laughs> as if a woman couldn't do it herself. <laughs> So, I mean, come on. That's, no, 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 no. Get your image right. This is a blog for women. Let's celebrate this, okay? So, yeah, I definitely see a disconnect with the imagery, especially with somebody, I don't even know if that person's wearing makeup. They've got glasses on and there's some other guy, strange guy poking his head in. Um, so, that, I definitely agree. It's difficult to navigate. The imagery doesn't match up. And 
there's really no value proposition, no reason. So what is it about this news that makes it so cool? I can see that it's Women Citric, a global directory, but how does this connect with your overall value proposition? I think we read the homepage, and, mm -hmm. and what was the what was the headline? Do you remember oh. something like like um, Sparkle or something? Sparkle was it was a three three words. Sparkle stands out because that one kind of surprised me. Right. <laughs> so they just want people to sparkle and, and be happy. Um, no, you've got real value here. You just need to bring attention to it. Start with the headline and then actually match the images up with the content and then finally make it easier to search through the content. You've got a number of tags, but I don't see any broad categories. I can't browse. And if I don't like the top two, I'm gone. Yep. Excellent. Very good. So uh, I think we're out of time, everybody, right? We're out of time, Paul. Zero minutes or actually negative one. Everybody, we want to thank you again for uh, tuning into this web clinic. Uh, we'll be back with another episode, with another test, more observations, hypotheses. Um, if there's something that you guys would like to test or, um, or like to know about, please let us know, and we're going to try and kind of fit that into our testing calendar. Otherwise, we look forward to hearing, um, seeing you again on our next clinic and uh, seeing your pages. Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon.